Feeling strong. <laughs> hey, good morning, YouTube. This is Ted, Black Pearl Voyager. Uh, we're out in the garage again today, and uh, that's because I got another little project going here. Uh, if you recall from my earlier video about uh, my death wobble issue, uh, I decided that I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the track bar also. And uh, I went with the Metal Cloak track bar for a couple reasons. Uh, first of all, it's heavy. Shipping weight is 15 pounds. I know, laugh that I'm curling 15 pounds, but when 68 years old you are, look as good you will not. It's too old. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's uh, heavy and it's thick, it's solid, and it is chrome molly uh, zinc coated. It also has the uh, Duralast replaceable uh, bushings in it, and it has the uh, adjustment here on the end, like it's supposed to, rather than in the middle here somewhere, which is probably about the weakest point you can put an adjustment collar. Uh, you'd have This tube would have to be hollow. You'd have to thread it. And then anytime you've got threads, you've got clearance. Anyway, and the second reason is because <laughs> it only costs 189 bucks. Yeah, that's right. Solid steel, chrome molly, 189 bucks. So this will be going in the Gladiator. It's going to replace the adjustable, which was a surprise to me, track bar provided by Mopar. Yeah, uh, I, it was when I was talking to the guy who uh, did the alignment, he actually called me and we talked for about 30 minutes after that. He was concerned about the track bar. I didn't know, did you know this, that the Mopar track bars on the 2000 Gladiator and probably the JL2 are adjustable? Hey, that's amazing! I've never seen an adjustable track bar on a, uh, a Jeep before that wasn't some kind of aftermarket, but evidently they're doing it now. Still, the adjustment is here. It's uh, not nearly as hefty or made out of the same material that this is. So I expect uh, this is going to be a much stiffer and a much better option for me. So stay tuned to the end of the video. I've got a secret I'm going to share with these track bars and the installation. So don't go away. So for this job, we're going to need a 21 millimeter socket, half inch drive, and a 21 millimeter wrench. Uh, do we have a 21? There's a 21 millimeter wrench right there. Well, let you get it off of there. Well, grab the impact driver too. Okay, so here's one end of the track bar, and that's a stock one. And there's the little surprise that I didn't realize that uh, these track bars now come from the factory adjustable. So, I'm just about to pull that bolt out there, and we'll have this track bar out of here in no time. going to take a offset here, a wobbler I call it, because that's what it does, it wobbles. And there goes the wing nut. And the old track bar is out of there. Okay, here are these two items side by side. And the stock one is actually nearly as heavy. Um, 
The weak point here is, it looks like this is a solid steel shaft, and they've threaded this in and this in, but you've got this hollow core center here that actually is your adjustment. And it looks like, and it wasn't me, someone's had a, someone's had a uh, pipe wrench or something on there, and that probably explains why, and I measured it. Almost exactly 18 inches. Perfectly centered. Or close enough to it. Yep, just about 18, just under 18 inches. Both sides. So I'm happy with that. The uh, axle is uh, almost perfectly centered. So I'm going to uh, measure from this point to this point and set this new one at that same distance. What I noticed about this, and this is something that concerned me uh, from the very beginning. Uh, when you use the stock hardware, look at the way the threads have ground themselves into the, to that uh, sleeve there, and, and that causes clearance. And uh, that goes back to the secret that I'm going to share with you about reinstalling this with the stock hardware. Uh, not going to do that. Another way you can check this is to just link these two ends with a bolt running all the way through. If this one slides in and that one slides in, you know you've got your length exactly right. One thread off either way, and you would not be able to do this. You would not be able to insert this into there or into here. So, pro tip. Okay, I promised that uh, I would show you a secret um, that I've known about, well, ever since I've owned a Jeep. And some of you may already be aware of this. But this is the stock hardware that comes on the Jeep as the mounting hardware for the track bar. Now, let me put you down here and I'll show you something. Okay, this is the stock hardware here. It is not a tight clearance fit. Can you hear that? It slops around. And even that little bit of clearance if you're not torqued to the proper specifications and I insist that even if you are this could be an issue get rid of that if you're going to do this job if you're going to upgrade it get the proper hardware this is a 9 16 bolt it fits in here perfectly and as you can see there is no not a bit of clearance here at all so if you're going to do this go ahead and get rid of the stock hardware and get some 9 16 hardware it'll get rid of that clearance there's almost nothing there and you won't have to worry about this going loose and wallowing out the hole where this mounts in the frame if you wallow out that hole you'll never get it tight this eliminates that okay here's the problem with the stock hardware this is 14 millimeter hardware this comes on all Jeeps and the problem is is it's what does that say Thir what does that say 13 8 13 9 somewhere around there 13 8 13 9 14 millimeter The 916 hardware is 14.2 uh, millimeters. That's uh, almost half a millimeter. Uh, and on a microscopic scale, that's like the Grand Canyon. So that's why I changed this stuff out. It gets rid of that much clearance, that much slop. 
And make sure when you get 9 16 make sure you get grade 8. And that will take care of, eliminate another fail point, another wobble point, another looseness point. Okay, so there it is. Fully installed, just a couple of bolts. Now you might have noticed I used the stock bolt on that end. That's because I didn't have the right length 9 16 to go in on this end. So uh, I reassembled it with the stock hardware and eventually I will get the right 9 16 hardware for that other end. I didn't show you the install because it's pretty basic, cut and dry very easily. Uh, I measured it and the holes lined up perfectly. If they don't line up perfectly, once you get this end done, slide this end in. Then all you have to do is turn the steering wheel one way or the other, however much you need. Uh, or have someone do it for you. And that way you can slide the bolt in when that happens. Uh, real easy, you don't have to get out any straps or anything like that. And ratchet strap it right or left. Just turn the wheel and watch it move right or left, depending on which way you need it. So, that's all that. I sprayed it with some... Something to loosen up the hardware. I didn't really need to do that, but it leaves a film, and so I'm just going to clean some of this film off. Looks like it's going to remove my old paint marks, too. But I've got that cover because I grabbed my paint pen while I was there. So let's mark this bolt. Not going to bother marking the other side because I'll be removing it as soon as I can find some 916 hardware. It's hard to find. You'd think, oh, I'll just go up to Ace. They don't have anything in 916. Neither does Home Depot. I had to go to Napa to buy these 916 size grade 8 automotive bolts. So don't bother looking for them at anywhere but uh, online or possibly an automotive center you can try your local ace mine doesn't carry anything okay it's some days later and i've, I've got the right hardware to put in there some 916 hardware so i'm going to get that out of there and show you something that i omitted earlier here's where i neglected to detail on the install of this the pocket that this fits in is a little narrow here where the bends and folds are in the welds and what the instructions tell you to do is to wallow out this hole here so it will drop down low enough so you can get the hardware through and I did have that problem but I didn't do that what I did was is I ground the knuckle here and on the other side just a little bit right here I ground this down here and on the other side so that it would drop low enough into the pocket that I could get the hardware through it would not go through until I did that so just something to notice just just a note okay it's all in and marked when you get your 9 16 make sure you don't get it any longer than 3 inch. 9 16 3 inch. The reason being is you cannot reuse the wing nut that comes with the 14 millimeter hardware. You have to use a grade 8 nut that fits 9 16 hardware, whatever thread you picked. I think mine are 9 16 18 or 14 anyway the key is is that you won't be able to get to that nut with an open end wrench you'll have to use a box end wrench you can use a box end wrench it will fit up in there and you can get it started but if your hardware is too long like even a half an inch too long you'll be able to tighten it up but you won't be able to get your wrench out because the hardware is too long for you to get 
for, for you to pull your box end wrench off. So make sure you only get three inch. Uh, I made the mistake of getting three and a half inch, so I put the old hardware back in and I'm gonna have to try to run down some 9 16 by three. And that, remember, is for the axle end. The frame end is not so finicky. I could have used it there. So maybe I'll pull that one out and put it over here and put the longer one over there. Light bulb. <laughs> While I'm under here, might as well. <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. I'm a smart man. Okay, so that's exactly what I did. Just swapped the three inch from the frame side to the axle side. Didn't have any trouble getting a box end wrench up in there where the wing nut goes. And we got it torqued down and everything mounted and painted. So we're good to go. Uh, thanks for tuning in to this. Um, if you like this kind of thing, don't expect too much. <laughs> I try not to work on these as much as possible. But there's always something to do. Always an upgrade. So be on the lookout. Stay tuned for some, uh, uh, some project videos on this 78 Wagoneer. I know some of you may be interested. Uh, I've hinted at it somewhat in a few other videos. And uh, I'm going to do a once-over walk through that. And... Maybe keep you updated with the progress on that too. So, thanks for watching. I'm Ted. This is Black Bro Voyager Channel, and we'll catch you again. Get out there, all right?